I'm Kevin Barnaby, and welcome to this edition of Capital Talk right here on Capital Update. Thank you very much for joining us. Now, in the studio today, we're going to be talking to someone who owns a feng shui business and obviously has gone and is very famous throughout Malaysia, in fact. In fact, he doesn't like to call himself a feng shui master. In fact, he would rather call himself a feng shui practitioner or consultant. So in the studio with me today, sitting right across me, is Mr. Joey Yap, who is a feng shui practitioner and Thank consultant. You. Thank you so much for taking the time to Thank be you. with us Thank right you. here. Okay, um, from what I understand mm. from your uh, reading up on your history as well, I mean, you were actually an accountant before this. Yes, yeah, I've okay. studied accounting, but I've never been an accountant. Ah, okay, yeah. so you've never been an accountant. So this is my first and only job. Your first and only <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so you gave, up, you gave up numbers to do this. Now, when yeah. did you sort of first discover uh, your skills in feng shui and Batsi. Actually, this, it's an uh, interest that I have since I was um, in my high school days and oh, I, I sort see. of learned it, you know, on and off. Mm -hmm. And then during my uni days, I started practicing. Right. So uh, that's how the whole, you know, consulting business is formed since then. Oh, I yeah. see. So it's basically something that you, I mean, how did you actually sort of, I mean, you figure, out, you figure out that you, this was actually your line? Yeah, it's in the dream. It's a, oh. No, I'm just, I'm just kidding, right? <laughs> right? Imagine, yeah. I, I wish that could come to me sometimes, you know? Yeah. No, actually, this is something that I picked up the, during my, my high school days, as right. I said earlier on. And uh, during my uni days, I was practicing this. Mm -hmm. So I have clients then, and, oh, you know, okay. it seems that um, the clientele keeps building up. So, okay. so obviously, you've yeah. had quite a fair bit of success with the, uh, yeah. your feng shui readings and such. Correct, correct. So, so I mean, it started many, many years ago. Right. So, as I said, this has been my... First and only job. First and only and job, right? I'm unemployable right now. So. <laughs> <laughs> because of that, actually. Yeah. But the thing is, I mean, for you to have that much success, that means, how would you sort of rate your success as far as your... I think I still have a long way to go, to, right. um, considering what I would like to achieve ultimately. Mm -hmm. You see, um, prior to me doing this consulting firm sort of um, arrangement for this um, feng shui, yeah. prior to that, feng shui is much like um, home base you know, cottage industry sort of thing right. where, you know, if you want a feng shui consultant, usually go for a feng shui master right. and he comes from his home and he comes with his robes and fan and stuff, right? Yeah, and the typical, the, typical, stereotypical, ty typical, right? right, yeah. right. <laughs> so that image is not good, you know, so, right. and plus they don't do it in a professional way. So I sort of, you know, changed the way it is practiced. So now a more structured system, right. you know, because this is an <clears> art <throat> and a science at the same time. Right. And in order for it to have any respectability in, in, in society, it has to be, you know, um, there must be results and there must yeah, be follow-ups, yeah, exactly. you know. So exactly. how do you keep track of all this if you don't have a proper team mm -hmm. and a proper system in order to manage your clients right. and manage expectations and produce results? Right. So the whole firm itself, we have a big team that does all this. All right? So we not only do the consult, we do the follow-ups, we keep track, mm -hmm. you know, so that's how it's done. So even after you've sort of... Uh um, dealt with a client or mm. helped them out in any way. You actually still do follow-ups with oh, your clients. For a long time, yeah. yeah. For a long time Minimum of six months. Six months. At okay. least. And how, how, much, how is the longest that you've actually done in terms uh, of... Normally, the clients stick with us for a long time. Okay. okay. So, but so six it's basically months because is, they want per to... per project, you know. Right. So that is the minimum thing that we would do. That's a five-step five step process of how we do a consultation. Right. So in the old days, it's just you call the, the master here mm -hmm. and he takes your arm bound, he goes home and never sees right. you again, right? <laughs> right? So this is different. So what we do is we start off with an assessment. Right. So let's say you are interested in a feng shui assessment mm -hmm. so we first assess your property or you know your piece of land right. and we will tell you the potential of this this right, property right, and land right. and then we go through the audit process you know meaning now we'll have recommendations we come up with ideas of how you could best use this property mm -hmm. based on your date and time of birth whoever is using the property and so forth there is a process where we actually do further research right. you know further developments and then we that, that's the third stage R&D mm -hmm. Right. Okay, so it takes about two to three weeks just to do that, you know, because there's a lot of small things that we may miss out on on site. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's in, in the old days, a feng shui guy comes there and they see within three four minutes and he goes off. Right, right? now there's a lot of research and and data, so we prepare like a full report. Mm -hmm. And stage four is where we actually have all the architects and the designers and the owners mm -hmm. together, together discuss right. how you know, it's supposed to be how built it's supposed or, to be done. Right, right, right. And then the fifth stage is make sure it happens correctly and follow up. You know, so it's actually a, quite a long and tedious process. It's a long, long from process. From so it's no right. longer just come and then you collect the ang pao and then you go, mm -hmm. you know. Right. Yeah. Now, you've obviously been very interested in feng shui since yes. you were in your uni days. Yeah. I mean, were you actually taught feng shui or did you yes. sort of pick it up? Yes, um, I pick it up from various people and practitioners. As, right. I, as I told you, right, um, mm -hmm. I've gone through reading books, mm -hmm. meeting different practitioners. You know, right. sometimes some of them are very good practitioners, but they're lousy teachers. Right. You know, some <laughs> okay. of them are great teachers, but they, they don't know how to practice. Right. You know, just like any art, right? You mm -hmm. know, there are people teaching in business schools who are professors, but they don't run businesses. Right. You right. know, then there are great businessmen, but they don't know how to teach. 
right? right? So in feng shui, it's the same thing. There are academics and then there are practitioners. Right. So I sort of go to all these practitioners and then the academics and then mm -hmm. we study from books and that's how I get all the information. And plus, you know, because feng shui is such a traditional art in, in mm -hmm. the old days, mm -hmm. it is so difficult to get a sort of um, unified set of information. Right, information right. is like everywhere. It's so difficult to get. Mm -hmm. So during my research and all that, I discovered there are so many different schools and so many different techniques. Right. And it's so difficult for anyone just to go and learn it by themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's why as a side business, I sort of produce all these books and right, it's part right. of my research material anyway, you know, it mm -hmm. won't take me too much just to write it down right, in a more right. presentable and understandable way. And of course, eight people in the process while you're doing it yes. as well, right? So, right. and at the same time, so that's how I build up the, um, all these books now right. up to date and, and then there's a whole academy teaching these programs. Right. Yeah. Okay. Now, if we look at uh, feng shui, how can we relate uh, feng shui and Chinese metaphysics in our working environment and business environment? Okay. Um, you see, there's a whole f art of um, business training that talks about developing the person, mm -hmm. okay? So it's about the human beings, right? right? So how do we affect change on people? That's the most important thing. So right. basically, there are two forces that affect people. And normally, in the old Chinese version of it, they call it luck, okay? Right, right. So okay, let's say I use this word luck. How do we account for it? There's such a thing called external and internal luck, mm -hmm. okay? We, if you don't like the word luck, we say it's factors, okay? External and internal factors. When we say external factors, it relates to the environment, the economy, the market, mm -hmm. maybe information about right. things around you. Right. That with that information, you can anticipate and prepare yourself, right? right. Okay. So I call these external factors. Right. And then there are internal luck or internal factors. For example, a person's character or attitude, um, which is, it could be an asset or right. a liability. A liability, right? right. Mm -hmm. Or a person's thoughts, how a person thinks. It's extremely mm -hmm. important because, you know, there's one ultimate <coughs> purpose in life and the purpose is to be happy. Right. But to be happy, many people have different ways. Yes. And it all starts from their thinking. Mm -hmm. So it's good to know that pattern of their thoughts, right? right? And the third thing is very important, which is we always talk about this, talk about gifts, about mm -hmm. talents, mm -hmm. right? The sooner we could discover our inner talent, the sooner we can enter the path of least resistance to our success. Right. right. Some, many that, people that, that, will say more like that. a subconscious thing, actually. Yes, but we need to right. discover that, you right? So it, let's right. say you can really, you're really good at singing, but you discover that you could really sing like Whitney Houston at the age of 80. What happens? Oh, I wouldn't know. What yeah. would happen, actually? Yeah, it's then, like, be, it's like, then it's, we are singing, yeah. say, singing granny. You're singing okay. granny pretty much, yeah. <laughs> so there's <laughs> right. no point right now. You miss out all the opportunities. So you want to discover your talent as early as possible oh, in life. Right. You know? So that is what, what we mean by internal luck. Now, mm -hmm. the idea of metaphysics, is to help you discover both external and internal. Right. So in a business environment, we wanna know and anticipate, for example, uh, market conditions, economy, and how it affects you, mm -hmm. the trend of your industry, or the environment, how it affects the people as a group. Right. External right. factors that may be beyond your control. Mm -hmm. That's the, the realm of feng shui. Oh, feng shui see, talks about your environment, right. okay? You have a work environment, you have the business environment, so many so many possibilities, right? right. And then it the, Bazi, or astrology, yes. talks about the inner environment. Yeah, let's talk about that for a second, because yeah. I mean, it's a bit new to me, Bazi. Mm -hmm. I mean, so what is it? it Bazi is, is basically it means astrology. Right, okay? astrology, right. It's a type <coughs> of astrology. You know, we have Western astrology, there is um, Indian astrology, then there's Chinese astrology. Right. Different forms, same stars, okay? Right. You see, in the old days, there, there are a lot of people who have nothing to do. They have no Facebook, no TV, <laughs> nothing. Yeah, so no what social do they media do? websites, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so right. what do they do? They look at the stars and start to make relationships between the stars and human beings, right? So that's the whole idea of astrology. That's how it comes from. Right. So different regions of the world will have their own system. So right. you have um, the Western system, and then the um, Indian system, and then the Chinese system. Chinese have two systems. Right. One is called Purple Star, the other one is called Pa Zi, eight characters. I see. Okay, so this system is called the eight character system. Now, it's still the same stars, just a different way. It's different like a different, way, right? like you have a, a Porsche or a, a Mercedes, different, different brands, but same car, right? right? So what I have here is that I took this system and applied it to the um, business environment, to people, right. you know. You see, the thing is, we don't predict someone's future. Mm -hmm. In the old days, it's easy to predict future because most things are really set. If I look at your chart and I see a heart problem, mm -hmm. you're gonna die of a heart problem. I will be accurate. The reason is very simple. In the old days, there is no heart bypass. Right. If you have a heart attack in your chart, you will die. But right. today, medical advances and all that, yeah, it can yeah. help you live longer. Live longer so exactly. we no longer <coughs> can really predict an absolute future, but what we can do is we can see patterns. 
So because we understand these patterns, we can then help that person develop to the maximum talent or um, you know potential that they have. Right. Okay, that's what we mean by internal luck. Okay. So that's the whole idea of astrology. And astrology basically also can do two things. One is to see your um, possible outcome as a result of the pattern that you have. Right. And the other thing is to increase your personal in internal luck. Internal meaning luck, your right. character, mm -hmm. your, your, your thinking. And it was making you a better person pretty much. Much better right, person. Right, right, right. So that's how it's done. Okay. okay. Now, um, let's look at feng shui consultancy as a business right. right now. Now, you um, obviously discovered that you had this particular passion for feng shui. Mm -hmm. Now, when did you actually sort of look at it as a um, sort of, I wouldn't say start a business. I mean, when did mm -hmm. you actually sort of look at it as more of a business? I uh, think uh, when it started to grow to a, a situation where, you know, I could long, no longer Sort of handle it on your uh, own. Yeah, much, then right? we started hiring people and it sort of develop into a business. Now, right. um, my main idea of starting the consultancy was not because I wanted to do a business. Right. Okay, I regard myself more like an artist. Okay, okay. so it's also what I talk about <coughs> these days during uh, in mm -hmm. astrology classes where we right. categorize people into three types, you know. So the artistic types, meaning you have an art to sell. Mm -hmm. You know, for example, for example, you are a good TV host. For example, you have an art, a skill. Thank you okay? very much for that. <laughs> <laughs> and then they are very okay. good operators, right. people who really operate and manage things. Okay, mm -hmm. so these people will grow up to become good managers. Okay, right, right. and then they are the good entrepreneurs who really wants to do business, buy and sell, and basically basically build something. Mm -hmm. So, out of these three categories, I regard myself more as an artist. So I have an art. I want to make sure people get to benefit from benefit this art. From it, right. You know, mm -hmm. appreciate it. And to do that, you need good operators and yeah. business people to help you out. So right. I discovered that, well, if I want to do this, I got to have these two people with me. Right, so right. that's how we start getting the team together. And so the thing is, like, if you're starting your business as well, I mean, you couldn't obviously just pick any, uh, any person off the street to actually sort of join you. You, you had to yes. go through some process to yes. sort of evaluate. The process is very simple. You know, people always look for compatibility, right? right? I don't. Okay. All right? That's a big difference here. You see, you can be compatible with someone, but that person could be incompetent. Uh, What's okay. the point of partnering someone who is incompetent True. just True. because he or she is compatible, compatible with, with you? Right, right? Right, right, right. So you want if in business we look for people who are competent and have the aptitude and character to do the job. Right. All right? So basically what I'll do is I'll look at their charts and understand that the capacity I may not be compatible, I may not even like them. Mm -hmm. Okay. But they can do the job. They can do the job. It's the most right. important part. So the thing is, when you started this business, I mean, how long ago was it that you actually sort of... 15 uh, years. 15 years yeah. already. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So um, looking at it, now we're in 2012. So this would have been sometime 97. in 97, in yeah. fact. Well, just, before the turn, just before the financial crisis. How about yeah. that? Um, so it was, it was hard at the time. That was really hard because was we, were, we were totally not prepared for it. But yeah, yeah, I think some people looked at it rather drastically and said mm. that it was pretty bad. Mm. But looking at it now, 15 years you've been in this business. I mean, how do you see your business sort of doing eight years from now in 2020? I think it will be much better than, than it is right now because more and more people are accepting this. All right, because um, the snake oil incense thing is, is you know, fading away mm -hmm. and people start to realize the benefits of using feng shui and astrology. Right. You know, <coughs> it's basically like um, in the old days, you know, I mean, maybe like 20, 30 years ago, personally, personality testing, mm -hmm. when it was first introduced, Myers-Briggs, DISC system, yep. you know, at that time, nobody accepted this. Now it's a corporate norm. Everyone does personality tests. Okay. So I foresee that astrology and feng shui in this mode, mm -hmm in the long run, will become something of that effect. Do you think it will be something that businesses will adopt will, more will easily? Adopt, right? Yes. Because, I mean, obviously you talk about being uh, compatible and obviously being competent at the same yeah, time. Yeah, because so, um, this is very important. Yeah. You see, personality test alone can find out your character at the moment. Right. But it cannot find out core characters and it cannot foresee sort of what sort of outcome mm -hmm. and hidden talents that right. a person would have. Astrology is a design, uh, a system designed since old days just to discover this mm -hmm. talents. You know what you're good at doing, right. what you're meant to do, for example, what you are meant to do great. Now you'd be surprised that a lot of people don't do what they're meant to do. Right. That's why they have you know really troubled lives. Okay. Now the thing is, um, this uh, this business that you're in. Mm -hmm. I mean, in terms of consult, I mean, do, are any other consultancy firm, feng shui consultancy uh, so far not doing, that I doing the same thing as you? There are a lot of people doing the same thing that I'm doing mm -hmm. in the same field, right. but they're not doing the same way I'm doing it. Okay. You right. know, it's, it's, as you can see, you know, it's hard to get people together, a team together. So, mm -hmm. you see, um, when you put a group of artists together, it's very hard to work together. Oh, you, that is yeah, the That I would one, agree, yes. Right? Yes, yeah. Even in, in any line, you know, any artist group together, they, they're, they're artists. They, they have more love for the art than the business itself. 
Right. Okay, right. so that is the challenging part for most people in our field or in most artistic fields. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's why you don't see so many, you know, consulting uh, uh, feng shui teams, yeah, you know, yeah. out there. That's right. the main challenge that they have to overcome. Okay, um, we sort of have time for a couple of more questions. Mm -hmm. um, so. When you talk about uh, sort of realizing abilities and stuff and like that, I mean, what's the what's the main challenge in realizing the abilities of people? Awareness. Awareness. You know, I think the first step is getting that person to become aware of it because um, younger people is easier. Mm -hmm. And let's say this person is like, you know, uh, 50 years old. In 50 years old, that person did not have any prior experience mm -hmm. in knowing that talent. And all of a sudden, there's this guy here looking at a personality chart and saying, hey, you know, you actually have this talent, mm -hmm. but you did not know. So mm -hmm. that process will take longer because he or she is not aware. Right, that awareness right. process, you need, it takes time. Okay. And once they are aware, they get onto the path of least resistance to their success. Okay. That takes time. All right, that, that actually takes quite a bit of time for mm -hmm. them to actually work. Yes. So awareness is something that needs to come from within, pretty yes, much, yes. is that what you're saying? Okay. Yeah. One last question before we wrap things up here. Now, apart from over 75 best-seller books, you know, I mean, you've obviously created quite a bit of a stir with that. Uh, we're interested in your Decoding Your Destiny seminar. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, what is the seminar about and who can benefit from it? Right. This seminar is uh, extremely important in the sense of uh, self-discovery. Right. Because you know, everyone wants to know what they're good at doing, what the potentials are. Mm -hmm. So I've packed all this information into one day where we're going to talk about how you can decode your chart to find out three very important aspects. Number one, what is the wealth potential? Mm -hmm. How to maximize that? Number two, how do you see connections with other people? Because everything and everything you ever want in life comes from other people. So how do right. you make that connection? Right. And the third thing is very important. What's the path ahead? Are there any obstructions and obstacles? What is the easiest path that you can walk? Right. So if you discover three things, at least you could improve your life by 30 to 50% easily. Okay. That's what the whole seminar That's is about. That's what the whole seminar is about, yeah. right? Okay. Well, Joey, that's about all the time we have for this edition Thank of you. Capital Talk. Now, for those of you that want to more, know more about Joey Yap and his books, obviously you have um, the Batsy profiling here, the 10-Day Master. Now, mm -hmm. apparently these books are available in, uh, in all the bookstores, in all the, books, yes. all the major mm -hmm. bookstores around here. Uh, mm -hmm. So if you want to get your copy, you can definitely do so and obviously give yourself some uh, insight as to what you should be and what you can be, that's I think. Right. And my seminar on yeah. Yeah. And the seminar yeah. And the seminar on decoding your destiny. Now, just quickly, 10, oh, when, is that, right. when is that? When June is that? 10th. June 10th. Okay. Yes, so at the Cal Convention Center. Right. So for those of you that want to know more about and want to attend this seminar, where can they sort of... Uh, yeah, they can go to my website, yeah. okay, yeah. or um, joeyup.com. Right. So all the information is there. You can send an email to... Um, right. to us right now. Right. So capital, capital at joeyup.com, is that right? right? Okay, yeah. Yeah. so for those of you that want to know more about the, uh, the seminar and of course wanting to get more information about the seminar and want to perhaps go to the seminar, the email to sort of inquire is capital at joeyup.com. Well, that's about all the time we have for this edition of Capital Talk. Thank you very much for joining us uh, for this particular edition of Capital Talk. I'm Kevin Barnaby. It's back to Capital Updates. See you soon.